Welcome back. And we're here on the Career Confidant today talking about leadership and the future of work and, and how we can help people future proof, proof their careers. And we have Gary Anella with us. And Gary, you are at the MBA program, and I'm not going to attempt it, but you're at an MBA <laughs> program. Uh, tell us yep. a little bit more about where that is and what types of, of professionals you're working with that are coming back to get their MBAs. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, so I, I work as a leadership and career development manager for an executive MBA program. Um, easiest way is to just say WHU, which is based in Germany, uh, near Koblenz, Germany, kind of in the center, right on the Rhine River, beautiful, small location. Um, I'm actually based myself in Leipzig, which is quite quite a distance away. Uh, so I travel there when the students are on campus. Um and yeah, there are a lot of uh, people who are going back and doing their executive MBA because they want to typically the people that we see because the average age of our executive MBA cohort is about 38 years old. Um, we have, uh, I mean, these are these are millennials and, and for them, impact meaning is important. I know you've talked about this and some of the other, some of the other, other um, broadcasts that I've, that I've heard from you, you talk about this desire to really make an impact. Um, and so that's what these executive MBA candidates uh, are, 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 are concerned about. They're concerned about making a difference. It's not just about, you know, do I get to the next level? Can I, can I achieve the next level? It's really about having, uh, making an impact. I love that. And when you're seeing leaders come in, tell me a little bit about how you're you're seeing leadership leadership shifting. What's new with these students today? You know, the the, the word that's on everybody's mind and has been for the last year, a couple of years, is resilience. You know, the, the the word is a concept that has been around for a long time, but it's really kind of it's really kind of taken center stage for an awful lot of people. There are there's lots of uncertainty. There's lots of, you know, people talk about the VUCA world that we live in and the VUCA world of work, and it's changing, and there's unpredictability. And and how do you navigate that? And we've certainly seen more unpredictability than we've than all of us, than any of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. Um, with with the pandemic, um, there was a study that was done kind of during the pandemic um, that looked at burnout actually and and the numbers of baby boomers of which i'm kind of at the tail end i'm at the tail end of the baby boomers they were not so they've not been so affected by burnout however around 30% 31% but gen xers uh millennials gen z over half of them reported burnout now this was during the pandemic but it's just it's it kind of flags up this idea that there's an awful lot of change going around and people don't quite know how to, how to navigate it, how to, how to, how to get through it. Um, and so I think that's where resilience really comes in front and center. How do you, um, how do you navigate that? You, the, the, the guest you just had on, um, um, Antoinette was talking about how, uh, agility and adaptability, and that's kind of at the core of what resilience is well, to, to 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 adapt when things are happening that are completely out of your control, um, and it applies to coaches as well. I mean, things happen in coaches' lives and coaches' work that's completely out of out of their control, um, and so it's it's something that we as coaches have to focus on with our clients. It's also something that we as coaches have to think about it for ourselves as well. Yeah, and what types of um... I mean, we see the resilience and as you said, it's been around for a while. We've been talking about it for a while. COVID obviously it had a different flavor more recently. What are some of the, the ways that people are talking about resilience? What are some of their challenges with resilience? Well, I know that for, for the executive MBA program that I work in, uh, you know, here in Europe, being based in Germany, of course, things like geopolitical conflict is is really on people's minds we have students who have either been uh, or either from or are from Russia or Ukraine or Israel or are Palestinian 
and that 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 sort of global conf- conflict and and what's going to happen and what direction things are going in that's front and center of people's minds inflation is a huge thing that has concerned people the last year there were you know massive layoffs in the tech industry um that has people incredibly concerned uh, so those are the kinds of things that are that are on people's minds um and and i think uh you know resilience is not really about can you just kind of take it you know you sort of grit your teeth and and go through it right it's it's more than that it's about being able to 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 absorb it and to and to process it and then to kind of move forward in a in a way that's positive and in a way that's healthy uh as I said, more more than just kind of, well, can you bounce back? That's not really what resilience is. It's really more about what 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 the previous guest was talking about in terms of agility and adaptability. Yes. So what are some of the skills that you are working with your students with or that you um, as a coach, because I know you you coach outside of that as well. Mm-hmm. What are some of the ways that you're helping clients build their resilience? I think there's there's a couple of things. Um, I think it's important. There's different models of resilience, and one of the one of the kind of the key models of resilience is to to look at to to recognize that resilience is kind of a new way of seeing things and 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 thinking about things, and then also leading through things. Um, one of the models that I work with kind of breaks down uh, the different spheres of your life that affect resilience and really at the top of that um is is the authentic relationships that you have um we often talk about there's two things there's authentic relationships and also meaning and we often talk about uh being people who are introverts people who can kind of do fine on their own um but even then people need to connect with other people. They need to have sort of a personal advisory board, or they need to have their own personal boardroom of people that confidants that they can go to, people that they can talk to. Um, authentic relationships, really, really important. And, and, and really, I think it's really key. As a coach, I see this. It's really important to not uh, underestimate the value of of an authentic relationship of people who are close to you it doesn't mean it doesn't have to mean a partner or a spouse it just can mean it it, it can also be people around you who are um who, who are there for you people that you can you have a sparring partner you have a sounding board you have somebody that that kind of knows what's going on um and also meaning the second that's the kind of the second component and there are more but kind of the the second component is is meaning. What is it that brings value to your life? And this goes back to kind of the motivation that I, I see a lot of a lot of the executive MBA candidates talk about now. It isn't it, it is about doing something meaningful. Um, I, and a few weeks ago you spoke to to Jake Richings and he was talking about Gen X and meaning is really important to them. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but meaning has to be there. It's it it's people recognize they're spending a lot of time at work and people are spending a lot more time at work. And it's, we see it with, with people who are self-employed or people who are remote workers, they're spending more time at work than they, than they ever have been. Um, So coaches are not off the hook either because most of them are both remote and self-employed. And so they, they have to really take care of themselves. They have to look after themselves and, and, Two and there are, as I said, there are several others, but the two most important, that sort of top of top of the the heap, I think, are building relationships that are important, having a community, um, and also having meaning. and And I think that's a pretty that's a pretty easy one to crack for a lot of us as coaches because we do things that we think are meaningful. We wouldn't be doing what we do if we didn't think it was meaningful. So I think that's a pretty easy one, um, but it's about keeping that keeping that going forward and and developing those uh, and nurturing those relationships excellent well you are coming to join us in lisbon um, I am. on in april april 10th through 12th 
What will the takeaways be, one or two takeaways for the coaches, career services providers who are joining us for that event? Yeah, it's really about having tools. It's about really helping um, us as coaches, ha helping our clients have the tools that they need in order to become resilient. How do they face all of this uncertainty? How do they face all of this change? What can they do in little small ways, little small steps? And I'm also going to be talking about how that's useful for, for us as coaches. I, I think that it's very easy to think, well, you know, I'll take care of my clients and I'll, and I'll, that'll be fine. And that's what gives me meaning. And all of that's true. But what do we do as coaches to take care of ourselves? So it's going to be kind of two prongs. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, to, to talking with coaches about, you know, what can they do to, to develop their own resilience so that they can show up for their clients in the best way possible. Yes, I'm excited. And it'll be an opportunity for some of us, our career services providers, to also think about how they can serve people while they're in their jobs and moving up in their career, uh, in addition to what we might do already in terms of job search and career coach, career transition, career exploration. What does the next move look like? But then mm -hmm. once you're there, how can we support you in being the most successful that you can be once you're there? So I'm excited about that as well. Well, thank you so much, Gary. I'm, I'm excited to hear your presentation and uh, I really appreciate you coming to share some of those ideas about resilience today. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. All right.